Now, we've always said that asset allocation is important, but actually, how do we apply it? And how does it actually operate? Tom, you've always you know, gone on about the rigor and disciplines of asset allocation. How do we actually use it? In several different ways, Justin. We, uh, we have, if you want to use the terminology of the industry, strategic, which is a long-term view. We have tactical, which is a shorter-term view. And then we actually have daily flows. And we need to manage it at three different levels. So how do we actually do that, then? What's the strategic? Well, strategic sounds rather technical. What does that really mean? What we do is we take a look at the long history of how asset classes have performed. So how have equities performed, how have gilts performed, commodities, property, et cetera. And how long is history? History can be anywhere up to a couple of hundred years in the case of fixed interest uh, to shorter time periods for some of the newer asset classes, maybe 40 years in terms of some of the, uh, the alternatives. And what we looked for is for each individual asset class, not only how did they behave in terms of when did they go up, when did they go down, but how far did they go up, how far did they go down, but also how did that match what the other asset classes did at the same point in time. That, so that comes back to that correlation word you were talking about before. Yes, that, that other word we said we weren't going to use. How do they interact with each other? So in looking at the wide range of asset classes and their historical performance, we can put together a portfolio of asset classes which for a given level of risk would be ideal for yesterday. Okay, but you don't have 200 years worth of data of these things. I wasn't aware that we had it. Where do we get this from? We get it from a firm that we work with by the name of Ibbotson. They're an American firm. They're based in Chicago. And they have been in the business of evaluating asset class behavior for about 30, 35 years. They have the database on how these different asset classes have performed. And 7IM has paid them to convert that database into sterling as their base currency so that the information is then relevant to our investors. So that's a long, longer term strategic view. Do you just leave it at that or what happens next? We then take the starting point, which is the longer term view, and every three months we have the ability to look forward and to, based upon what we think we're going to look at next, to tilt that asset allocation or that strategic asset allocation, but only within pre-agreed tolerances. So we can't put somebody into a completely different level of risk than what they originally signed up for. Does that mean you then automatically rebalance? Well. We automatically look at the portfolios again, but whether we add a little bit more or subtract a little bit more is not a mathematical formula, so we don't automatically go back to the neutral position. We'll take a view on whether we should leave it there, add a little bit more, subtract a little bit based on what we're seeing in the world today, according to the Asset Allocation Committee. Okay, that's crucial. That, this is the highlight of our quarter, isn't it? We sit down to the Asset Allocation Committee. Sad people we are. I know, yes. <laughs> but I, you, I, I'm amazed with this group of people we've got together. I, every time I attend that meeting, I realise how little I know by seeing just how much they all know. Some of the characters there we've got in that. Uh, for instance, uh, we've got Michael Hughes, for his background. He's the uh, former CIO of Bearings. Uh, we have the current Chief Investment Officer, of one of the very large Asian banks who is a specialist in emerging markets. We have a specialist uh, in property. We have a person who runs his own currency firm. We have fixed income traders in there. And on average, each one of these individuals has been managing other people's money for over 25 years. That's a, I mean, it's a, a fantastic level of experience we've actually got in there. In fact, their nickname is No Hairs, Mo Hairs, and Grey Hairs, isn't it? Yeah, somebody with red braces once told me that. Yeah. <laughs> but the point of it, they, these people, they can, is them to, are they to there to foretell the future or what? What, what, what? what do you actually want them to achieve? What we want from them is to be able to inform us as to what they think comes next and make recommendations on how to position the portfolio to account for what they see coming next. And very importantly, we want them to make sure that we do our level best to avoid the very big downside scenarios that once in a while pop up in markets. And they, given their experience in the world and having seen bear markets before, are very valuable inputs to 7IM in making those decisions. Okay, so that's once a quarter, but things happen within the quarter. How, does it, how do we manage it in between? Well, as we mentioned just a moment ago, we have daily cash flows, so we have to manage the portfolios every day. So if, for example, the Asset Allocation Committee were to recommend that we increase the exposure to a particular asset class, rather than having to 
sell immediately a chunk of one asset to buy the asset class that we want to, we can use the ongoing cash flows to gradually add the, to the position. And what that helps us to do is to keep portfolio costs down by having less trading in the portfolio. So we can actually show this then diagrammatically. I mean, in the strategic asset allocation, we can see exactly what uh, Ibbotson are telling us. And we can see the longer term picture. And then we can blend that with then the tactical asset allocation and see effectively then the quarterly and day-to-day -day movements of all the different asset classes. Exactly. So each color in that chart represents a different asset class. And you can see that the colors don't, don't move in a straight line. Sometimes they go down a little bit. Sometimes they go up a little bit. And those reflect in a chart form, the decisions that are based upon the thoughts from the Asset Allocation Committee. So then when we actually look at that mosaic of different asset classes that goes over the years, our aim is therefore to try and plot a line somewhere in the middle of that. That would be the ideal condition. And indeed, over the seven years or so that the funds have had a public track record, that's about what they've achieved. So we've been able to blend the different asset classes and add our little tilts for the short term and we've been able to achieve a performance result that runs through the middle of that asset allocation page, which was the objective of 7IM, to go through the middle of the page, which means lower the volatility, lower the risk in the portfolios, think long term, and give clients a portfolio that will help them in their retirement and enable them to sleep as they do so. So I hope that shows that asset allocation isn't just a, a dead phrase. It's a living beastie from a longer term view to shorter term tactical to day to day movements. Tom, thanks for that. I hope that's made life clearer for everybody. Goodbye.